Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Adash Anaparadi. I'm an orthopedic and joint replacement surgeon at Sunshine Hospitals. I specialize in total knee, partial knee and total hip replacement surgery. Today I'll be speaking about the total knee replacement. So to understand the total knee replacement surgery, we need to understand about the knee joint itself and arthritis of the knee joint. So the knee joint consists of two bones, that is the femur bone, the thigh bone and the leg bone which is the tibia bone and in between the two bones you have this blue smooth material known as the cartilage. This is like the shock absorber of the knee joint. What happens with age is because of wear and tear, this cartilage starts to wear out just like the tire of a car. It starts to wear out to such an extent that the bones start rubbing against each other causing the pain. This is known as arthritis. So if you take the analogy of a car again, so once the knee completely wears out just like the tire, you need to get it replaced like a step knee. So what happens is, we remove, this is basically the total knee replacement surgery. So what we do is, we remove the bone at the top, we remove the bone on the bottom which has been worn out. We replace the same with metal in the top and metal at the bottom and we get a plastic in between and this gets the smooth movement of the knee joint back again. So this is a total knee replacement surgery. So who is eligible for a total knee replacement surgery? So I would definitely not say that every patient who has pain in the knee joint needs a surgery, definitely not. The arthritis has four stages, first two to three stages can be improved with physiotherapy and medications. But once you come to the fourth stage where the, the cartilage is completely worn out, that's when you require the surgery where your activities of daily living like even going to the bathroom are very very painful that's when you should consider a surgery so who cannot get the surgery done so a lot of people think that if you're very obese that you can't get the surgery done or if you're very old you can't get the surgery done or even if you're very young you can't get it done so all these are no longer true so even very obese patients can get the surgery done they also have good pain relief it will definitely help if they reduce the weight because the pressure on the joint reduces but they can definitely get the surgery done when you talk about age, usually arthritis sets in after the age of 50 or 55. So you, before the cutoff age was above 50. But nowadays some patients who have rheumatoid arthritis, it's a different kind of a problem where the joint is also worn out even at the younger age, even the 20 to 30 year age group, they can get a total knee replacement done if it's required. And if you look at the other extreme of age, patients even up to 95, 99 can be operated if other things are all fine, if the heart is okay, if the kidney and the liver are doing okay, you can definitely do the surgery for them as well. Uh, at Sunshine, we have done surgery, or knee replacement surgery for a 99 year old patient who did very well after that and is walking very freely. So till around 10 years ago, uh, total knee replacement surgery wasn't done that commonly. That's because of many different reasons. There was not that much of awareness in the Indian public about this particular surgery that you know that you can get this surgery done without any problems. Secondly, in India, we have this kind of a, a mentality that, okay, it's hurting, doesn't matter, we can get along with life, get along with life, until you come to a really severe stage. But if you look at the Western countries, they, the moment they have a lot of pain and if they feel that it's hampering their daily life, they get the surgery done and they're doing very well. So now that mentality has slowly changed in India as well. Even people over here are realizing that there's a lot of benefit by getting the surgery done at an earlier age instead of waiting till it becomes too severe. And uh, if you talk about complications, uh, I would never say that there are absolutely no complications. We are not God. But at the same time, the number of complications has come down very, very, very minimal. Touch wood, our complication rates in general orthopedic circles uh, is usually as low as 1 to 2 percent. So what kind of complications can you see? So immediately during the surgery, there are some complications like the bone get, may get fractured while doing the surgery. A lot of the patient's bones are very weak. So while implanting this, um, uh, the new implant, the bone may get fractured. So they may have to be fixed. That's one complication. It's very rare. And another dreaded complication is infection. So almost as low as 1% of patients, unfortunately, they do get infected after the surgery is done, in spite of taking all the precautions before the surgery. The good thing is, although it is a little bit of an annoying a complication to have, it can be treated. Antibiotics are there and then uh, there are some surgeries known as debridement where we can clean out the joint and get the infection down to zero again. And the long term complication is basically wearing out of the new joint as well. So God given joint itself wears out after maybe 50, 60 years. So we can't expect a human made joint to last another 100 years. So it, this may uh, wear out as well. But the life of these joints are at least 20 to 25 years. So you, if the exercises are done well, this can last even longer. One very rare complication is uh, something known as a blood clot, a thrombosis. Okay, so what happens is uh, sometimes when the patient is not mobile after a surgery, 
if they are lying in bed for a long time for many days together, the blood starts to slow down and the clots form and this may get dislodged and go into the heart causing an embolism. So it sounds very scary but it is extremely rare, it is extremely rare thing especially nowadays because nowadays uh, we are not letting our patients lie in bed for many days together. The day the surgery is done from the very next day we are making sure they walk. So once the movement keeps happening, once the legs keep on moving, the blood circ circulation keeps on happening, the clot formation chances are very, very low. So nowadays the clot formation chances are quite low if the patient is mobilized very early. So uh, what we spoke about till now are the details about the total knee replacement surgery itself and when it is to be done and how it is done. In my next video I will be speaking about the post operative care that is care to be taken after the total knee replacement surgery is done. So stay tuned.